Recently, a gentleman named Paul Moore was testing a Eufy doorbell and found what he termed some pretty serious security concerns. He posted on Eufy's forums, on Twitter, and created two YouTube videos. Those videos and posts caught Linus's eye over at Linus Tech Talk, and he has since stated that he won't work with Eufy or their parent company, Anchor. This has started a slew of video responses from different creators and comments around the industry. Mr. Moore made at least eight claims, and each one of them calls into question Eufy marketing themselves as private and secure. Now they are. Number one, thumbnails used in the rich notification that comes to your phone are being sent to Amazon's AWS cloud services and are stored there for a time. Number two, if you use Eufy's facial recognition feature and are found during an event, a picture of your face will be uploaded at the same time. It's the same picture every time though, and not one taken of the event. Number three, the thumbnails are uploaded at full resolution, or at the very least, a very good resolution. Number four, the thumbnails had a URL that could be accessed by anyone if they had that URL, no passwords necessary. Number five, even when he deleted his account, he was able to access the photos for a time, which would potentially violate the EU's GDPR. Number six, the encryption keys used were incredibly easy to guess and the data structure of the table suggested tech tracking could be taking place, especially with the next revelation, which is number seven, with that facial recognition, if he used a different username, a different camera, and even a different home base, his face ID, and therefore that same thumbnail picture of his face was again uploaded. And number eight, if you had the serial number from any UFI camera and a readily available free program called VLC, and then you did a little bit of work, you could access a Eufy camera's live stream without any login credentials. Now you're seeing on screen what has been proven by the material Mr. Moore has uploaded, and you're seeing what hasn't. But the biggest risks to us are the last two items on this list, and both of them haven't been proven outright. So I'm gonna tell you what I think you need to do if you have Eufy cameras or products in your home as we continue with Brian's lightning round of Smart Home News. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life, and you know, I rip through the news pretty fast usually, but the situation with Eufy is very tricky because everyone will sit at a different point in the spectrum when it comes to security and privacy. And when a company like this promises completely local and completely secure and completely perfect privacy, and then someone pokes holes in it publicly, we have a lot to unpack. So bear with me for a few minutes as I tell you what I think you need to do. Now, P.S. If you don't want to hear about this situation with Eufy, there are time codes below in the description. The biggest risk here is that someone could stream your camera using that VLC program. From the details we have, if someone gets your serial number from the camera, and they do quite a bit of work, they would be able to view the camera stream. As I said before, this hasn't been substantiated, but Paul Moore said that he could do this, and The Verge has now said that they could do this too. The reason I'm telling you you need to do something right now is because on my cameras, on my home, the serial number is printed on the bottom. Anyone could walk up and take that serial number right off the device. Now here's the other problem that I have, and no one has really talked about how these security breaches typically go. Almost every time there is smoke when it comes to security, the fire shows up later. And as I walk through the videos from Mr. Moore, I can tell you that I did not like the encryption keys that were being used. And I didn't love the data structure that I was seeing. Plus, I didn't like the fact that even behind their web app, things were not managed better. There was just too much visibility here. So when I think about someone just needing a serial number and Eufy maybe not being as great with their data management as all of us had hoped. I worry about the next step in what will be, I'm sure, a very thorough investigation of all of their practices by a number of security experts. So my recommendation related to this potential security issue is to take down your cameras if they're inside of your home and to take them down if you're concerned about someone accessing that stream at all. There's just too much up 
in the air. The other thing that has me really concerned personally is a statement that is completely unsubstantiated by Mr. Moore. He said that using a different username and a home base and camera could cause the picture of his face to be uploaded, which would suggest tracking because there's no user-based reason to have your face show up on my account just because you're standing in front of my doorbell and definitely not to a cloud server. Now again, let me be clear that he never proved that but it was a clear statement in his video. So here are my other recommendations around Eufy. Number one, watch the video that Rob at the hookup created, which will explain a lot of the thumbnail situation and a lot of the security practices being used. You're not gonna feel as afraid as I'm betting you feel right now once you watch that. On a separate security issue, Steve does did a test with Eufy cameras where he removed the camera using the physical reset button on the device and then he saw what happened to the footage and you won't believe it. But suffice it to say that this puts just as a big a hole in their camera security as any of this. And you might say where there is smoke, there is fire. Now feel free to ask questions below in the comments and of course the links to all of those resources are below in the description. But for now, let's get to the news from this last month. There are a ton of new options for Amazon's voice assistant in the US, and there's even a Canadian guy. Now does he say A? Eh? I don't know, eh? But you can ask Amazon's voice assistant to change your voice, or you can use the application. The new Create with Miss A option is available in the US too, which means your kids can use the Echo Show to create a story. Here's a quick demo of how that works. Create a story. Okay, here's create with. Pick a story theme you want to create. Tap or say underwater, space, or enchanted forest. Great. Let's get started picking the hero in your story. Nice choice. Now choose the name of the alien in your story. Rowdy, Gort, Spike, or hear more. Let's pick a descriptive word. <laughs> Sweet about failing his astronomy test. How did you like your story? Tap an option on screen. The Fire TV experience for the Echo Show 15 is just about ready to go for the general public. This will make the Echo Show 15 a lot more like your TV as you will pair an actual Fire TV remote with that device and can control it just like any other Fire TV. All this while still having an Echo Show. The Fire TV experience does have some special functions with the home button taking you between the Fire TV and Echo Show interfaces. Of course, you will have all of the expected play, pause, fast forward, rewind, and volume control buttons working, as well as most of the app shortcut buttons. But to get full functionality, you need a third generation Fire TV remote to have all of the buttons work, including the voice assistant button, which won't work unless you have that version. But probably the biggest news related to Amazon is what you could lose with their voice assistant. Because Amazon is going through some tough times and have actually stated that they will be laying off 10 to 20,000 employees, many of which are from their devices division and have been losing up to $5 billion a year on their voice assistant. It's unclear exactly how this will affect everyone, but I have a link to a video in the description below that I put together on this situation and you can watch that in just a moment. The Amazon application has some improvements at the very top, when you come into the home screen, you'll see shortcuts, which are based on recent things you've done in the app. And activity is actually showing you what's happened with your whole smart home recently. Something that was only available previously on the Fire TV 4K Max was the ability to use your Echo speakers for your entire TV and all of the HDMI inputs. But actually, very recently, it has been added to the Fire TV Cube, third generation I have in my home. For a while now, Google has been teasing us with the upgrade 
to their Google Home application, and the preview program has started to roll out. If you didn't already see it, Tech with Brett has a full walkthrough of that new application. And Google has just turned on their Matter features on the original Google Home, the Google Home Mini, the Nest Mini, the Nest Audio, the Nest Hub first and second generations, the Nest Hub Max, and the new Nest Wi-Fi Pro. But you might notice a couple of omissions from some of the devices you have. Those will come in 2023. It's also been added to your Android devices, and this will use the fast pair feature that I've shown previously on the channel. There are only a few Matter products you can use today with Eve being the front runner. They've just updated their Eve door and window, Eve energy and Eve motion products to be Matter compatible, which you can update through their application on iOS. And that led to a lot of people updating their HomePod minis to iOS 16.2. There have been some troubles with this, so you need to be a little bit careful right now. Here's a screenshot of a method that people have used to regain their full smart home control over all of the accounts because it actually looks like it disappears to some people when they do this update. But that iOS 16.2 is bringing these same Matter features. So we have a number of platforms with Matter features ready to go, but the initial implementation is going to be a bit rough. So maybe just hang on. One of the best smart home hubs on the market today can be brought into Apple HomeKit now. HomeKit users had some good options in the past with a car up, but this brings an incredibly powerful smart home hub with all of its Zigbee and Z-Wave goodness and connects it to Apple HomeKit and to Siri in your home. That hub is Hubitat, who announced this as part of a beta they are currently running. But in order to use this, you just have to make sure that your hub is updated and you use the normal process you would for adding an app in the interface. I tested this out and it's not going to bring 100% of your devices into HomeKit, but you get to choose what comes in and they tell you when something isn't available. The things that aren't available, you can use things like virtual devices to manage through this, but for everything else that I have tested, it is so fast to respond in the HomeKit application. I have a ton of different sensors and I've brought some of the cheapest products into HomeKit using this system. So this is something that I 100% recommend you do. And if you're looking for a great hub that can connect to HomeKit, this is a top level solution now. That announcement might have pushed the team at Samsung SmartThings to give us some hope for HomeKit compatibility themselves. We know that the Samsung SmartThings hub will be a matter controller, but one of the biggest gaps is that they have been telling us that their hubs will not work as a matter bridge. But recently, the TechHive website had an interview with Mark Benson, and he softened some of the language around that, as he said, and I quote, this feature is in consideration for a future release. This would provide a very similar experience to what I just told you happened with Hubitat and Apple HomeKit. And I think it brings the two competitors together in a way that would be so positive for all of our homes. As is usual, the tech industry is gearing up for CES. All of us creators are too, but Samsung always makes a pretty big splash. And it sounds like from a couple of reports, that Samsung will do this again at CES. But it sounds like the splash is directly related to smart home tech. And I think it's related to appliances if I'm reading the situation right. So stay tuned for some coverage on what comes out of Samsung in January at CES. Now what always comes out around CES is a ton of new product announcements. And I'm expecting a large number of companies to come up with an announcement around matter compatibility and with new products that will give them that compatibility. But sometimes it's just about companies giving us more access to their existing lineup. In fact, Wise just opened up a web store for Australia, which puts them in the US, Canada, and now the land of Aussies. And on top of that, Wise released two versions of mesh Wi-Fi systems. They're both well-priced, as is the case with most of their products, and I think they might grab a good chunk of their existing customers, and maybe even a few new ones. They also released a BR30 color bulb, 
which joins the previous set of A19s. But just as WISE released their Wi-Fi 6 technology, TP-Link played the old Trump card and dropped a whole series of Wi-Fi 7 routers and of mesh Wi-Fi systems that will be released very soon. I already spoke about Hubitat getting HomeKit integration, and while that integration is very positive, many of the people who have things like smart locks or garage door openers are finding that they have to use a workaround to get all of that integrated. Today, if you have a home bridge, which allows you to tie things like hubs to Apple HomeKit, then you can integrate those smart locks and garage door openers and lots of other devices. In the past, I've shown you Hoobs, which is actually mostly software that you can put on a Raspberry Pi. However, they have sold their own hub for some time and it is relatively expensive. I spent way too much and I'm kind of disappointed in myself. But they have released a new Hoobs Pro bridge that makes the previous pricing look cheap. Now the interesting thing about it is it will be matter compatible and it will have thread on it. So to me, it looks like the folks over at Hoobs are looking to become a full-fledged hub or a full-fledged controller. Akara released the new Cube T1 Pro sitting right here, which I demoed on our unboxing video and is a really fantastic controller now, as long as you can keep track of six different things that you can do with it. The big benefit this time with this version is that it works with Amazon's voice assistant to start routines. The previous version worked with Apple HomeKit and so does this version too. And Akara released the Smart Pet Feeder C1, which is probably the first time I've seen a pet feeder from an actual smart home company that integrated with all of their controls. I talked about Govi in my video about things I'm not buying for Black Friday or for this holiday season. And that's just because they hadn't been very clear about their plans with Matter and for integrations in other systems. Today, Govi just works with Amazon and Google Home, but it sounds like Govi might release some of that information at CES this year. They also have a couple of new heaters that are smart and have RGB lights on them. Plus, I like the new Wi-Fi air quality sensor. Although in my household, I like having carbon monoxide detectors in the version I have from Amazon, which isn't available on Govi's new display version of an air quality monitor. And speaking of Amazon, they have quietly released a pretty substantial lineup of smart home products that work only with their voice assistant under their Amazon Basics lineup. And I'm trying to bring a few of these in, but there are bulbs, switches, plugs, and even power bars already and I'm sure more is to come. And I'll be showing you some products from Wasserstein who create accessories that work with the Nest products. This will show up in our monthly unboxing videos, but Google's latest Nest video doorbell wired version doesn't have an indoor chime if you can't get it working with yours. So they've actually designed one that will work with that device. I've talked a lot about different videos and resources for you to watch. If you really want to know where Amazon is headed with their whole smart home offering, I went into depth to break down this situation for you and to keep you on the right side of your own smart home. That video is up on screen now, but if you wanna see the factual breakdown by Rob at the hookup on the Eufy situation, that's on screen too. And so is Steve Does's video on that other concern I told you about. So pick your poison and otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate automate.